Welcome to our Glukonkania mechanics video about Scapman. Scapman is our product for simple cloud certificates. Um, and I want to show you what is behind Scapman and will guide you to this video. First, I will explain uh, what is Scapman and uh, the Scap protocol. The second step is the architecture of the Scapman solution. Then I will show you the certificate deployment and also a little live demo how we can deploy the Scapman solution. And last but not least, the certificate validation, how we can validate the certificates also with a little live demo. First, what is Scap? SCAP is uh, the simple certificate enrollment protocol and it's originally developed by Cisco. The idea of Cisco was not to serve certificates to cloud clients, but their idea was provide certificates to their network devices without any user interaction. So really near to our 100% cloud idea, we don't want to uh, interact with a machine to give them some certificates, and for this protocol, we can use SCAP. So what is SCAP-MAN? SCAP-MAN is 100% cloud-based certificate authority, and we can use it without any local infrastructure. For technology, we have the Microsoft Azure Key Vault and App Services. So because this is a standard services from Microsoft and the customer can use it and we have some basic functionalities and enhanced functionalities, for example, hardware encryption for the keys stored in Key Vault or high availability for the app services. The main idea is to full replace legacy PKE for our customers. We can implement on-premises PKEs we can use self-generated root uh, certificates. But the main idea is our Scapman generates his own root certificate. And with this, we can create client certificates for our 100% cloud enrollments. The architecture is very simple. And the base services are Microsoft Web Apps, Azure Key Vault, the Azure Active Directory, and Intune. Also, the GitHub repository of Click on Kanya but only to serve the artifacts to the web app. The web app loads the artifacts, and then we do not interact with the GitHub anymore. To extend the uh, services, we can use the traffic manager for high availability use or the Azure storage to load the artifacts from this place and not anymore from the GitHub. For example, if you don't want to have any auto-updates from the Glucon Kanya GitHub, you can place the artifacts in the Azure Storage account, and then you have full control about your version. When we deploy the Scapman in a basic or default way, we have the web app and the key vault connected to the Azure Active Directory and Intune. I will describe later for what we use the Azure AD and Intune. GitHub, if it's running on Azure, I have placed it outside the Azure network. We're only loading the artifacts from GitHub once the web app starts. Then the web app is running without the GitHub repository. To access the Scapman, we get by default URL um, from the Azure websites.net domain. We can also use a custom domain. This is for default, we get it from the web app. So let's use it for demo purpose. The additional setup is for high availability. And here we see we have custom domain, myscapman.mydomain.de. The traffic manager is our front end and go through point. He points to one of the web apps. We can uh, use web apps in different locations or in the same locations. And all web apps communicates with an Azure Key Vault or Microsoft Azure Storage for the artifacts. And I will show you how or for what we use the Azure Active Directory and the Intune. First, let's look at the Glockenkania GitHub. On the left side, you can see our GitHub repository. It's a public repository. Um, here we describe the functionality and uh, also the basic deployment process. On the side, you can find a deploy to Azure button. Let's go 
in our live demo. Here I have my Edge browser. In my Edge browser, I'm at the Glockenkania GitHub repository. Scroll down to the Deploy to Azure button. Here you can find also a link to the beta channel. It's important to use the normal Deploy to Azure button if you want to get the most stable version of our development. So I press the um, Deploy to Azure button, single sign on into my Azure dashboard, and here I can see the Microsoft template for the Scapman deployment. Um, here we can choose our subscription, can create a resource group or choose um, already created resource group, and last but not least, the location. So let's create a new resource group, Gika scap minus mechanics. Then we need an org name. My org name is Geeky Mandalore. We use trial license. At this point, we need an app registration GUI and an app registration key. In our GitHub repository, you can find the description of how to create the app and the registration in the Azure Active Directory. Now you need to define a key vault name or an app service plan name and a web app name. So let's do this. For the key and the GUID, I have prepared something earlier. So I copy my key, paste my key here. Then I go to overview, copy my Azure app it, paste it, and yeah, that's it. Um, last step, you need to agree to the terms and conditions and click on purchase button. Now the deployment starts. Um, on the upper side, we can see deployment in progress. When we click on it, we get the deployment overview. Um, this normally takes one to two minutes just to wait for it to finish. Our deployment is completed. We get the succeeded message, and we can see our deployment is complete. Now we can go to resource groups, and then here we can see our created GK SCAP mechanics resource group. And in this, we see Azure Key Vault, the Azure App Service Plan, and the Azure App Service. When we click on the App Service, we get the address here and I will click on our address and yeah, that's it. Scapman is deployed. The next step, we can see config issues. We have no root uh, CR. So let's create a root certificate. Click here to start. Let's open a blank page and then we can see new root certificate creation. Hit the checkbox and then create first node we get the message, okay, this will take one or two minutes. If you reload, you can download your root certificate with this button, and then you can import the root certificate to any backend device where you want to use the client certificate later. After our deployment, we want to look on how to deploy the certificates to our clients. We have our devices, we have Microsoft Intune, we have our Scapman solution, and the Key Vault. These are the parts we need for certificate issuance. The first step is to create Microsoft Intune policy or configuration profile. In this profile, we define the complete Scap certificate and also the URL of our Scapman solution. Then we can assign these policies to our devices. And the next step is Intune deploys the policy to our devices. And our devices need to request a SCAP certificate. They get the URL to request the certificate from the Intune profile. Then they contact our SCAPman solution. Hi, I want to have a certificate. Here's my public key and metadata. Metadata contains uh, some device-specific uh, information. This information, uh, metadata, the Scapman sends to Intune. Why? 
we want to protect us against false requests. And this is a way we can protect against. We ask Intune, is this a valid request? Give Intune the metadata. Intune can look at his policies and say, yes, this is a device who wants to have a certificate and gives answer to Scapman, yes, that's one of my devices. Scapman says, perfect, I will create a certificate and sign it with my root, start in the Azure Key Vault. Then Scapman deploys the certificate to the client and says, here, your certificate, be careful. Our devices took the certificate and place it in their personal store. This are the way to deploy the certificates. After our devices have their certificates, they want to use it. And for this step, we need to validate the certificate. Let's look at the certificate validation. We have implemented the online certificate status protocol into Scapman. This is an alternative to the classic certification revocation lists or CILs. The online certificate status protocol or OCSP um, have some uh, benefits. So we can do online requests, live requests to the Scapman. These requests are very small and fast because we do not send full uh, lists of all certificates between backends or something like this. Now it's a short way. If we use a certificate, the client or backend requests um, our Scapman if the certificate is valid. Our Scapman solution do a cross check with Azure AD to be sure that these devices are existing Azure Active Directory devices and if they enabled in the Active Directory. We can protect us against old or stolen certificates. For example, if some member of your company lost their devices and you don't know where the device is, you can deactivate the device in the Azure Active Directory. And our Scapman cross-checks uh, with the Azure Active Directory if the devices are existing and enabled. Can use this for a temporarily certificate revocation. So, for example, some uh, member of your company lost their devices, and yeah, you want to block any access to your uh, corporate Wi Fi or VPN. You can disable the device in the Azure Active Directory, and immediately after this, the certificates are revoked. If the member finds their device, then you can activate or enable the device. And with this step, you have activated the certificate again. And the member can join the Wi-Fi, can connect to a VPN backend. I want to show you how the process works. So we have our Azure Active Directory devices, our mobile devices. We have access points or VPN gateways our Scapman solution, and the Azure Active Directory. The first way is that a device wants a certificate-based authentication to one of our access points or VPN gateways. Then our devices, our back-end devices, do an OCSP request to the Scapman. And the Scapman can check, does this device exist in Azure Active Directory? And is it, is it active? Then the Scapman gets an answer, yes, it's one of my devices and it's active. So the Scapman can respond to the access points or VPN gateways. And finally, our devices can establish a connection. That's the validation flow. The OCSP responder URL is embedded in the certificates. So we do not need to configure our backends. They can read this URL from the certificate and then send the OCSP request to this URL. I will show you how this looks when we make a little demo of the OCSP request. Back on our demo device, um, I will close this window. First, I go to my Azure portal again. Here I can see an Azure Active Directory Windows 10 device. This device is managed by Intune and have a certificate. We can see it is, it is enabled. And to test it now from this demo device, 
I have exported the certificate as a file because now I can use cert util minus ul and only path to the file. When I hit enter, I get the retrieval tool and here I need to switch to OCSP. Click retrieve and yeah, we can see we are contacting scapman minus mandalore.cloud and we get status OK. So our device is active, everything is fine, we can use the certificate. Now I will disable the device, finished, and go back to the retrieval tool. I hit again retrieve and I hope this works. Yeah, revoked. So our certificate is revoked and we cannot use it anymore. So go back to Azure Active Directory, hit enable, finished, our device is enabled again. So we can hit retrieve and we can see, okay, certificate valid again. So I hope you enjoyed my short demo and uh, descriptions of Scapman. And if you have any questions, please uh, contact us and yeah, try out our GitHub uh, Scapman deployment and test it in your environments. Have fun and nice day.